I feel like um, when I go through things, yeah. I usually just jump towards the thing that I like the most, which is fashion. I'll either binge shop or in design. <laughs> 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 Retail therapy. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> or design or like doodle stuff. So when I decided to use that as a career, I just decided let me do something I usually do. I gravitate towards that because I like it. It's a source of comfort. Yeah. And because it's comforting, then I can express myself. Um, with art, I usually want to know like where the interest comes from, like where it started. Uh, for you, like, did you study art in high school or like? My art journey is actually wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess. That makes it interesting. Yeah. So, art in my life, art and fashion have always been fighting. I did both. Yeah. And form one, form two, form three. I did art and fashion. I was so good in fashion. I finished our assignment, the clothing we're making. Yeah. Three months before it was needed. And then art, I was good, but like I wasn't serious. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So like when it came to O level, my mom was like, pick. Between art and fashion. Mm, she said I should pick. I picked, did you pick? What did I you picked pick? fashion and okay, I was like, yeah. no ways, go to art. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, but why did you talk so me to me? So why did you pick? the option, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> why did you talk me to pick? Like my fashion teacher had to call my mom. She begged my mom, she was like, please, your child is so good in fashion. Yeah. Please let her see Oh, you couldn't fashion. do both? I couldn't. You had to do one practical at all the boys and Yeah, that yeah. does sound like the kind of stuff that happens in high school. Yeah. 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 So what happens with fashion? Um you studied at form four. I'm assuming if you've picked it as a practical, that means you do the exam. Did you pass that and go on to do it at A level and then now you're like about to go into like Art? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> it was drastic. <laughs> I, I thought you said you were good at it. Like I was good, yeah, but like you know how they're like Give us your eight pages. I went with two. I handed in two. Okay. I'm actually surprised okay, okay, I, I didn't see. get a U. <laughs> because okay, I, can see. <laughs> uh, I handed in two plus my final, which was three pages, and I got an E for art. Then, yeah. when time came for us to pick A level subjects, my headmaster was like, well, you, you can't you pick. You can't. <laughs> you got an E. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah. Then yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Fair enough. So you went to do something else during like, like A level. I did something completely different. What does that mean? I did computer science. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> computer science, travel and tourism, and environmental management. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Do you, do you think by doing something like because computer science feels like a tangent to like the creative world, right? Yeah. Um, never did it myself, so I can't like fully, I wouldn't fully know. But you feel like doing something like that and then coming back to art as you've done now, do you think, I don't want to say it gives you an edge, but do you think it added something to you that you might not have had? It did, it did. Because now I understand something technically, yeah. especially with digital art. You, you need to know your computer like crazy, how it's functioning, the settings. Yeah. So I feel like computer science did help me in that. So for the past, I think I've been seeing you in the art like scene for two years. I mean, I've been doing this for two years, so exactly, fair enough. For the past two years, you've been working, um, I think building up maybe, building up what we would call like maybe the formative years of your like your, your your art career right like outside of uh outside of school at least mm -hmm. but one of the things you're about to actually do is uh go to uni and study art if i'm not mistaken um why do you think it's important to actually take that journey instead of just doing what you've been doing all along which is making art going to exhibitions uh and trying to sell it 
why why go to learn in in an institutionalized setting why is that important to you to me i feel like it's it's more of a being fine-tuned and finding my voice in my art i feel like i haven't found my voice i just draw yeah. or paint what i feel like painting and being in the art scene that has been hard for me because my work is in constant and you need consistency to actually keep building up in your career so mm-hmm. i think going to school for me will give me that that fine touch and that finesse in my work fair enough i hear that and so and so when you say um consistency is that like uh, a style uh, in the sense that if i go to a to a gallery at some point i'm supposed to to be able to see something and be like i think mm-hmm. that's ropa yeah okay yeah. okay fair enough i hear that i hear that and so given that like i said the past two years you've been heavily invested in the art scene you've been heavily involved rather in the art scene right um what what do you want to see more? What are things where, when you go out to exhibit, when you go out to see other artists work, etc., that you're like, ah, I think like our art scene in Zim would be better if this existed. I think diversity. In what way? That's interesting. In the way artists make their work, because I see, I see a lot of artists. And I'm like, I'm looking at the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. What do you, ooh, that's really interesting. What do you think that's a, that's a consequence of? It's a consequence of being, boxing yourself. I think people are just boxing themselves and they've become comfortable in being recognized through the style. Fair. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's really interesting because like you say, um, you want to go to school and like establish a style, but at the same time, it's like a fine balance between like having that mm. and putting out like one piece of work or at least a variation of that piece of work like 10, 15, 20 times. Yeah. Um, you recently actually um, curated an exhibition, uh, Zuri Art Gallery. Uh, it was you and three other emerging artists. What did you, what did that experience demand from Ropa, the curator, uh, which I assume was maybe one of like your first experiences in that domain uh, that was different from making art or modeling or designing in fashion where you're more comfortable? I feel like I learned a lot. Curators go through a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> from like... That sounds terrible. <laughs> From like trying to deal with the artist, especially if you're like short on hand, you are the curator. So you have to make sure everything like is everything going is well. There, yeah. You can't be there like, nah, they're going to do it. He's there to do it. Like you, the artist or what? <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. I remember <laughs> I did a reopening. Yeah. So the first time I opened, I was coming from Bari with the artists yeah it was an emergency the whole show was crazy (laughs) because my aunt gave me the space to do an exhibition we sent out invitations to artists to exhibit and they dropped out last minute Mm. how how last minute is last minute like two days before yeah two days before i had to deal with it oh that's terrible and my aunt had said she's taking charge of it. And I was like, okay, I'll be the artist. I'm always the artist. Yeah, I will just exhibit, fine. it's fine. <laughs> Two days before she's like, I can't do this. This is your baby now. You, <laughs> you want to put your work out there? You do it. I ran around. I then remembered that I, when I was by Barry Art Space, there's artists that I was with and I yeah. reached out to them and they agreed. So like the day of the exhibition in the morning, I was going to collect art yeah. pieces from the yeah. artists. Yeah, like nothing was hung, nothing, <laughs> nothing geez, was hung. Geez. Even like lighting, we hadn't fixed the lights. She dumped it all on me <laughs> two days before. <laughs> 
Yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. Okay, so so that's what informed that event happening twice, and I, and I assume the second time, like things were much more. They were easier because <laughs> the work was already up. Now I only had to get the lights installed, get the yeah. bar running, and get the artists to be there when people come. Would you do it again? I would. Okay, fair in, enough. In like, given that there's a lot of time to plan, I would. But yeah, it's not my thing. Running events, it's not my thing. <laughs> that's, I, I love that you mentioned that, right? Because like, so much work goes into that. Like, there's so many moving pieces that you might not um, see when you get to a place where you're just experiencing the art that, yeah. hey, this probably needs a lot of work and time. What I would ask, though, is what's more common for you is um, going into a space uh, to actually exhibit like as an artist as you had initially thought you would do for for zuri initially right um when you go into spaces like that what are you what are you looking for uh, at this stage in your career is it i just call you and i'm like cookie there's this and you go or there's like some sort of discretion where you're like mm, this looks like a red flag on the part of like uh the gallerist or like the space itself how how does that work for you right now uh, I've always been particular with where I put my work. I have turned down a few people who like come to me wanting to have my work in their exhibitions. Yeah. Because with the given theme, their direction, I'm just there like, your, your vision is not aligning with mine. And I wouldn't want my art to be shown in that light because it's... It's not a nice It doesn't, thing. okay. Yeah, so I have been, I've always been particular when it comes to exhibiting and accepting even like modeling gigs. Yeah. I've been particular and I always will be because at the end of the day, when you're now big, all the little stuff you did comes out yeah. into it's, it's the there. light. <laughs> Especially now in the age of the internet, like yeah. everything is kind of documented. Mm. Okay, everything fair. come out. I hear that. So you mentioned an interesting thing, right? Like even with modeling, that's like uh, the stance you take. And I was talking to you, I think two or three weeks ago, and I was saying, for like a long time, I just thought you were a model, right? <laughs> and this is, I think, a perception that people might, might share if they don't like actively follow you on Instagram or whatever. Um, do you see any... Any like intersection between um, you know the work you do as a model and uh, the work you do as an artist? I do see a bit of a connection because um, most people I paint about I met in the modeling industry. Their stories are from the modeling industry and how yeah. it affects their lives in general. And fashion in general also, the stories from people that I get in the fashion world, I paint them in the art scene. Yeah, yeah. fair enough, I hear that. And so that's interesting because um, that's like a, a glimpse into, into your process, into like um, the, the subject at least of, of your art. Um, and again from reading the, the summary uh, on Ropa from the exhibition you did, uh, you strike me as uh, a person who like feels things like intensely, <laughs> like a deeply emotional person. I don't know if like that's a fair thing to say, mm -hmm. um, but in that process, right? Uh, you obviously, like naturally, we experience a lot of things uh, in just life in general. Uh, for you, what is it like a, a feel type of thing where you're like, okay, maybe this like should be art and uh, this is kind of this is not that like how does that work in terms of actually deciding what like stories you want to tell i think it has to strike me because with my art i can't just sit down and start painting i yeah. have tried i know a lot of artists create art in bulk they sketch yeah <laughs> do all this fancy stuff i don't do all of that I can only hold a brush or a pencil when I'm like extremely happy 
or like in extreme turmoil yeah. or like <laughs> if someone's story strikes me and I'm like yeah. wow I need to to put that down so yeah it's it's when someone's story completely strikes me and I'm just there like this needs to be put on paper needs to be put on canvas yeah like you have like a deep desire to mm-hmm. go and, and and do that that's interesting though like you said um, a lot of artists almost like work in bulk right where they've got like maybe 50 100 paintings they're like almost like compulsively painting if I can describe it as that right mm-hmm. um, and I I suppose in a, in a, in a in a rudimentary way, that's also practice, right? Like, as a consequence of doing more, you're like refining your craft. Yeah. So for you, um, where do you then go to like uh, practice if that's not your your style of, of working? I practice when I sketch designs for my clothes. That's, yeah, that's when I use my time to like remain. Because when you're an artist, you need to always exercise your wrists so that oh, they that's don't thing? yeah because what happens if you don't that's interesting like you can ask an artist <laughs> to asking. draw something today yeah. and not draw something for like the next three months and then they yeah. draw something for you after those three months it will be totally <laughs> different <laughs> like it's, it's it's terrible it's terrible it's terrible. You have to keep you have to keep your wrists moving. Get your hand has to be the pencil. You your hand is the pencil. Always draw. I think I I think you said something like that, um, on your YouTube channel, I think. You said something along the lines of like your hand just knows, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. you said something like that. Mm. One of the things that stood out to me as like recurring was that uh, watercolor and acrylic like keep coming back uh what informs that is that like a cost thing is that a i just love this thing like what what's up with that for me that's like the easiest medium and it's cost effective it is it is cost effective (laughs) (laughs) i have looked at getting into um other other types of mediums like there's right now in my workplace there's this place there's this print shop we go to yeah and they they laser print so the board they laser print on top of it's you know already engraved and it makes this like okay. cool okay. texture because yeah. yeah. they're doing it over and over again on the same board so when i was looking at changing my medium to a more sustainable one because i want my art in the end to be sustainable yeah. I was looking at recycling materials and doing recycled materials and using acrylic and watercolor, I'd feel is like it blends well. It yeah. would blend well. Okay, I hear that. And yeah, so I think that's why I decided to stick to to, to having mastered those two and keep practicing on them. So that when I now use recycled materials in my art, it's I'm not wasting. <laughs> Fair enough. You also recently mentioned that you're actually working on um, working towards a, a solo exhibition before you leave. And I have a couple of questions regarding that, right? Um, with that, I first assume that that's like a bit scary because um, at least every other space I've seen. Have you, have you done one before? A solo? Yeah. No. Yeah, because every other space I've seen your work is, uh, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's usually with, with other artists, right? Uh, why is that something you wanted to do uh, before you left? I want to remain relevant okay. in, in my country. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's like I want to leave with a bang. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I hear that. <laughs> but I feel like I've developed since the last exhibition my whole insight on art has shifted because when I did the last exhibition I got a lot of like pointers from one of the greatest artists in Zim and I recently also had a meeting with him and he was like filling me in on what you need to know in the art industry how you need to get by and how to like find yourself and when I went to Kenya as well last week 
I met some creatives and I met a lady called Nadia. Yeah. And she she's a really good artist. And I was showing her my portfolio and she was like, Your your work is good, but you need to find your voice. And like that resonated <laughs> with me so much. I was like I feel like that every time I do my work, I'm just there like, yeah, something's missing though. <laughs> so yeah, I want to experiment on that with the new knowledge I have. The solo, I want it to be like an awakening, a breaking out of my system. Yeah, mm. I hear that. And, and so um, have you... Man, and I don't even know if this is like a fair question. Have you like decided on like how many works you're going to exhibit there or that's like... <laughs> I am at the point where I'm just there like work, 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 make, 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 make. Yeah. See how much you have at the end. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I thought that would be like the, the answer because yeah, I mean, it's... It, it feels like an unfair question to ask an artist. It really does. Because <laughs> if I put a, a, a number to it, I will start thinking, wow, 50. I'll mm. have so much pressure <laughs> and I'll start working like I always work <laughs> under pressure. Fair enough. <laughs> That's interesting, though, that you, you say that like you, you work like you're always under pressure. Um, I was talking to you before and you were saying you really sell your art. Uh, so what kind of pressure is it? Is it, is it like outcome pressure where it's like, I'm not gonna like, am I gonna like what this comes looking like? Or what kind of pressure is it? Is it something you can describe? With, in terms of outlook, when I visualize something, I always manage to, to get it out. The pressure is with the exhibitions. I never plan an exhibition. People okay. are just they're like, we have an exhibition, please bring work. And they're okay, like, no. I don't like this, I don't like that, let's make new work. Oh, okay, okay, I hear that. <laughs> yeah. So like, the Zuri one, I needed four pieces. The place is big. It, it looks big, I don't care, but it looks huge. <laughs> I could not take my little A3 paintings. <laughs> yeah, that's So I was like, <laughs> Four, four, four pieces of big work in a week. Can I do that? <laughs> okay, I can see like why that would. Yeah. Why that would like feel overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely. You make those in that week. Yeah, and it's actually not even in that week. There's the one that has all of the faces. I spent three days making that, and two days before the opening. Is it the three faces? There's like. There's two, four, I think there's six or five faces. Okay, so I, that's a different one, mm. I think. There's six or five faces, and the detail on that thing, it took me a while. I was painting it there, like, why did I choose to do this? <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it dry when it went on the wall? It was. Okay. It was the first one I did. Okay. <laughs> so I took three days on that one. Then the other three, the other one, the fourth one, I already had it. I was like, let me put the small one. Yeah. I can't do a fourth one. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> then the other two, yeah, the other two, I did on fast forward. I was, they were both on the wall yeah. at the same time. I'd work on this one, shift to this one, take a nap, wake up, work on this one, shift to this one, <laughs> until I was done. Yo, yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds crazy. Yeah, that sounds. And and this is like a medium within which, like, how do you cover up your mistakes? Because now it sounds like it's really like high stakes and like kind of like. You have to like, make it work. You have to make it work. <laughs> I remember doing. <laughs> I remember doing the the. There's one I just did. It was like. My inspiration was like the sun and that burning feeling of being like, you feel like you're in hell, but you're not. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't know what it feels like to be in hell. And I did the yellow, the red, all the swirls of the brush strokes. And there was that one red dot that fell onto the canvas. <laughs> and it was not supposed to be there. And I'm like, no. <laughs> How can I fix this? 
Then I was like, okay, I just put both my hands in red paint and just started slapping the whole canvas. <laughs> I think I said that on you. Is that on your YouTube? I think like, yeah. that's <laughs> It is there. It is there. Wow, wow. Exactly. I remember it. It's the, is it the man and the woman? Like the man looking down or There's something like two. that? There's two. There's <laughs> two. The man and the woman looking down. I didn't make mistakes on that one. I really wanted that one to be messy. And looking out of control. Oh, so that was like intentional. That was messy. intentional. Messy. Then there was the. <laughs> then there was the yellow one. I was just like, let's put hands on both of them. Let's throw hands. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! I love it. I love. It. We love to see it, though. We love to see it. Um, nothing like a story like that, anyway. Like uh, that's that's where the adventure is, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so the last thing I'll ask you is. What are the challenges that um, you face as an artist trying to make art in a context like ours? I feel like it's costly, first of all. There's a lot of costs in there. Like, my salary is all for art stuff. <laughs> I can forget about the luxury of buying other things because it's just all going to art stuff and I'm just there like okay, it's okay it'll pay off it'll one pay day off. <laughs> I, I know that feeling <laughs> yeah you're like breathe take a breath it's gonna be beautiful it'll be okay <laughs> super relatable I hear yeah. it I hear it I hear so it. it's the cost as well as um, the critique on your art like externally or art or like externally but then okay. that's for me it's not a problem it's just that in zim i feel like a lot of artists are bound to their one style mass producing the same thing over and over so when you come with your your three faces your five faces your hands intro yeah your art this piece <laughs> is not looking like that piece they're like, is this two artists? Are you the same person? Are you having an identity crisis? What's going on? <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> so that's, those are the two things. And I feel like that's what's um, held me back in Zim. The fact that people don't really appreciate variety. Yeah, and okay. It's more of like, be consistent, have work that's like holding one story but for yeah. me i'm like i can't tell one story over and over and over and over again yeah that does sound like it would get like pretty i don't know if boring is the word but it sounds do you think it's also a consequence of um sometimes people not understanding that like you're a young artist uh who is trying to find their voice one right uh and naturally that means you have to like try a lot of things yeah. whereas maybe the person who's critiquing you is like maybe 50 years old and they've found that thing and it's like bro i can't i can't be you because i haven't like lived for that long like i just i can't have that is could that be like a thing there as well or it's not that i think um for me when I got a critique from an older person, they said that my work was good, but it had too many good things happening at the same time. So that's when okay. I just, yeah. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? I do not know. I'm still trying to, to decode that. What that means. Yeah. Fair so enough. like, from what I got, he just, he was just saying like, I don't know where to look. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. overwhelmed. Okay. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> so okay. like, I feel like that's one thing that helped me. When I got that critique, I was like, I do need to go to school. I think I will find what I'm looking for. And if I don't, I do have, I have gained knowledge. It's yeah. always good to gain knowledge. Knowledge, network, mm -hmm. all of that. And I got critiqued by one of the younger artists I was working with. And they were like to me, your work has too much detail. You need to, to be more abstract. I was yeah. so offended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it 
means. I was, I was so offended. I was just there like, but your work is literally the same thing on 10 different canvases. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? And I'm just there like, what do you mean? Yeah, I think that's confusing, especially when I hear it comes from another artist, because it's, I think it's one thing for like a consumer, for me to walk into a gallery and not like fully comprehend what an artist is trying to say, etc, etc, and maybe not like the work. Mm. Uh, I think that's the thing that happens quite a lot where people like just sometimes fail to understand like what any of it means. Like, what, what the hell is this, right? Uh, but I would expect that maybe artists would, I don't want to say no better because that didn't sound like super judgy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd expect artists live in that world. Yeah, yeah. They, under they, they understand. Mm. 